here, the me here, me here, the me here. <laughs> so I'm currently in my unit and I did not work as much as I wanted to work today. And I'm pretty sure you're going to ask me, hey Demi, it's Monday today. Why isn't there any live video? Because <laughs> it's a Monday and I usually do um, I usually do lives on Monday, but I can't right now because I'm thinking about a lot of things. I am trying to um, what do you call that? I'm trying to manage my time, manage my finances, and I just finished writing them all in this notebook. <laughs> so the reason why I wanted to go live today is because I wanted to also share to you how I manage my finances. And I always manage my finances every time I do a launch. So like when, when the enrollment is closing, I grab my notebook and just list all the things that I need to pay for, my bills and things like that. So, so here's, I just recently learned about this thing. I'm not an expert at financial education and literacy. I've been jotting down my expenses for quite a long time, ever since I was in college. I have been jotting my expenses already so ever since then I'm so used to just having a separate notebook for all my expenses so this is not part of the four step process that I'm going to mention to you today but it's I think it's very necessary that no matter how small or how big your expense is you should really write it down on a notebook right so I am paying for 150 pesos for an iCloud storage like an extension of an iCloud storage because I need it and that's only a hundred and fifty pesos right so it's just basically one hundred dollar bill and one fifty dollar fifty dollar one hundred pesos bill and one fifty pesos bill right so that's hundred and fifty and then even though that's not really huge, I still jot it down. Even the ice cream that I buy in 7-Eleven that is only 25 pesos, I still jot it down. So I think it's very important that you you jot down all the expenses that you have to the entire day, right? To the, to the tiniest bit, okay? Always track it. Now, the, the four steps that I'm going to teach you as to how to manage your finances is not something that I created for myself I found this we had this topic in rising Filipino freelancers group so if you're not there yet we have a group for Filipino freelancers an entire group for that and we were talking about like how people are spending their money and how they are managing their finances and things like that and for me it's just actually this year that I I had like a little bit of leeway and extra like couple more couple more money for for something that I don't even know what to spend on that means I'm already starting to have more than enough okay so this is not to brag but because I'm I'm giving you an idea as to what to spend it on you know right? and and how I manage my finances so this is just the year so ever since I started working as a freelancer ever since I've been working um yeah hitting six figures every month this is just this year is the only year where i really had like leeway or extra money to like unlabeled extra money basically so i have extra money that i don't know what to spend it on and things like that and i'm also not the type of person who likes to spend on things so i'm not materialistic i don't like branded clothes if you're familiar with SM Super Mall, I'm not sure if the SM in your place actually had this this place called Surplus. So I usually buy my shirt in Surplus. So this shirt is from Surplus, Surplus rather, which is only like 200 pesos, 150 peso shirt. So I like plain shirts. I like shorts. That's me. <laughs> so I barely even buy things that are like expensive unless I have a speaking engagement of course I have to dress up something like that right 
So that's the time when I realized I think I should really do something with my money, right? So I also don't want to just simply save it because, you know, entrepreneurial spirit. I always think that maybe there's a better way for me to use my money as, you know, as something that would grow in in the latter part, right? In in later on or something like that. Like delay your gratification and then that money will grow. So I tried looking for I'm not going to pitch you an insurance company or whatever in this video, okay? I'm not I'm just really teaching you like how I'm doing it. So um um what do you call that? I looked into some of my friends are like into this life and health insurance and for some reason I'm not really into that because I really want to what do you call that? Like I've looked into a couple and some of them are not really into my way of thinking as an entrepreneur so it's very important that how I think with my money should also be aligned with the insurance company that I'm going to apply so things of that sort so now I'm thinking like maybe I should be the one who should be managing my money because there are very only a very few people who understand the way I'm going to spend my money right so um, there's that so <clears throat> I said what what if I DIY so instead of instead of going to like insurance companies and things like that so I started like DIYing things and I asked people in the rising Filipino freelancers group if like you guys have any idea how to manage your finances and stuff and one of my I actually met him I didn't, I didn't I'm not sure if he's a freelancer or not but one of the people one of the members in the rising filipino freelancers group sent me a video oh no the very first one that he said is that he has he has five different bank accounts and he definitely intends to save money in those five different bank accounts so he basically has five different buckets and at first i was like what you're going to open like five different bank accounts just so you can manage your money like that does not really sound right to me until he explained that those five bank accounts actually stand for five different categories of the the way you spend your money so the very first one is necessities right so his first bank account was for the necessities second bank account was for emergency funds so if he's gonna get sick or someone in his family is going to what like accident or something he has that money for that and he's not going to touch it the third one is investment so whatever investment he has financial insurance health insurance stock markets things like that so he also has one bank account specifically for that fourth one is for learning so if, if he's buying like courses and things like that then that's the only bank account that he's going to use for learning and the fifth one is what's the last one the fifth one is fun so whatever you want to do with that fun bucket or fun savings account then you can do whatever you want and i was like that sounds so cool but i was actually very much interested with the fifth one because because I barely even pay myself like I want to save money so much that I barely even pay myself for all the things that I do you know which which you would think you should actually pay yourself right you should actually pay yourself so that you'd be motivated to work right and because I love my work so much that I don't even care about if I'm getting paid well or not as long as I can get my message out there that's more important for me and being able to like have a security or a peace of mind in the latter part of my life that's more important to me than actually getting paid right at this very moment right so that's what I thought and he commented that and I was so amazed I was like that's so cool like who would ever thought that you should actually divide your finances in five different categories which is only right because of course you have to pay yourself you have to also have continuous learning which is the learning bucket and then you also have to have investment so that you don't just live paycheck to paycheck you should also have an emergency fund so whatever is going to happen to you or an accident might happen then you also have money for that and the last one is of course your necessities so it's very important to divide your finances to five different categories okay 
So, I ask him more about that. If you're into rising Filipino beauty dancers, you probably have seen this, but I ask him more about that, and I said, like, what what financial um, insurances company or whatever it is that are you in? And at at the latter part of our conversation, those things that he said, those things that he shared to me didn't really matter because he was, the main point is just really dividing your, um, dividing your finances to five different very, very important categories, which is actually right. So he linked, um, he gave me a link of this video of Dan Locke. So Dan Locke is like one of the huge guru billionaires in in um, the US he's a Canadian Chinese immigrant and he also said the same thing so you're going to have to divide your finances in five different things five different categories so 60% is for your necessities so whatever what's what's under the necessities category of course it's electricity water rent if you have office space then you also have to pay for that um what else your business expenses like for example i'm paying for our academy platform and create and rise academy so that's part of the business expenses um if you're receiving messages from me on messenger i needed a software for that so i can send it to a lot of people all at once so that's another different software right so those are under my necessities bucket right so 60 percent of whatever i make like whatever i make from my freelancing career from my launches all of that goes to the necessities bucket right that is 60 percent again so 60 minus 100, you only have 40% left. So those 40%, you have to divide it to four categories and equally should have 10%, right? Which is emergency fund, okay? Emergency fund, so for example, whatever is going to happen to whatever member of your family or you even, like you, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, you'll never know. So um, you should put that, you should put 10% of that, right 10% of whatever you earn to emergency fund and then another 10% for investments okay whatever investment you're very much interested in I'm very much interested in diversifying my investment portfolio like I'm I'm planning to enroll in this um, in this sorry it's very noisy you know it's the pipes and in, in the wall um, I'm planning to diversify my my um, investments portfolio to like stock bonds and then PDF you know like bank bonds you know just diversifying it so I don't put all my eggs in one basket so if you if you don't have any knowledge in that the very first thing that I could suggest is find someone who's already doing it and ask that person okay so find someone who's already investing family relatives friends on facebook ask your friends on facebook crowdsource like hey any one of you who's like investing can i ask for more of course your financial insurance friends are going to comment <laughs> but it's very important that um your your insurance company or your investment investment company is very much aligned to how you want to spend your money okay so that's that's just me it's very important that's very important for me um yeah so 10 percent for emergency fund 10 percent for investment 10 percent for learning so you now you don't have an excuse to not buy courses because i'm not saying that hey now you should not have an excuse to not enroll in create an ice academy huh i'm not like that i mean you could buy other courses i don't i'm not I'm not, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. If you want to learn from other people, that's completely fine with me. If you want to watch my videos, that's completely fine. So there, there's no rush. But my point is, you should not have an excuse to not have, what, to not have money for learning, okay? Whatever type of learning may that be. If you want to have subscription and Audible, which is like an audiobook, right? So if you haven't tried an audiobook, maybe you should because that's a really good way of learning, right? So another one is courses, and another one is also, what else is there? Like reading. So I I just recently bought my very own Kindle. I don't even know where it is. I'm going, 
I I just recently bought my very own Kindle for 5k in Lazada. So that's that's just what I did and and I started downloading books from Amazon. So that's included in my learning bucket. And then the last 10% is for fun. Uh, so last the last 10%, I don't even I don't even have any idea how I'm going to spend it cuz just af- just before I jump into this live video, I have n- I have my very own 10% already. Like I already started, you know, um, what do you call that? Like putting things in the buckets, like putting money in the buckets in those buckets that I mentioned earlier. And of course, for me, I have 10% for fun. So now I'm thinking like, what am I going to spend with this? But if you don't have anything to spend it for, if you're like me, who is very much of like a minimalist and doesn't even really like go travel or <laughs> or or buy some things or, you know, because cause what's important for me before was to get a computer and I don't already have a computer, then I don't really care anymore, right? So, so yeah, so if you don't have any um, any type of, what do you call that? Any type of, of fun stuff to do or any things to spend it on just save it because you wouldn't know if your friends are going to hang want to hang out with you and be like hey let's go to Boracay so you have some money to spend and go with them instead of tapping your tapping your classmate or tapping your workmate and say pa utang naman oh diba pina utang pa ang pang Boracay my goodness so don't be like that okay so now you have 60% for necessities and then the last 40% are equally divided into four categories with equally 10% each, okay? So that's emergency fund, investment, learning, and fun, okay? All right, so that's just me tonight. I'm not going to go longer than this. I'm going to have to also get my dinner. So I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!